who's up and coming? What's coming up? We talking television, and film, entertainment, and such. The hottest topic. And we're back. Facebook, we're back. It's with this all changed. We're back. We're back. We yeah. have another amazing guest. We're so excited Bryce. that she's sitting in our chairs, bracing nice. our minds. <laughs> Miss Deidre McDonald. Yo, yes, yeah. Bronze Lens Film Festival. Yes. Artistic director of the Bronze Lens Film Festival. This is his eighth year. Yeah. Eight years oh strong. Goodness. How does it feel to be eight around eight years as a film festival? How's it feel? It is absolutely amazing because we had no idea that opportunities would happen for us the way they have. Right. Um, because we thought, okay, we're just going to be a festival a couple days uh, during the course of a year. We're now year round. We show films every month and we have discussions. Uh, it's just amazing. We, you talked earlier about um, Ava, our first film festival. Ava comes with her first film that she wow. paid out of pocket for. Wow. And amazing. she says, I love you guys and I want to talk to you about something. And come to find out, she was forming a firm, which is now a Ray, and it's independent distribution uh, movement. And uh, so it's for Af well people of color as well as women filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And at this point, we've shown at least 15 films. And it's a network of film festivals. Okay. And so New York and LA show for a week. And around the country, other cities show for a day. Okay. And we do grassroots promotion. And at this point, she's made a deal so that Netflix will now pick up the films that are shown. Yes. So yeah. Ava is looking out for everybody. Yes, she's, she's amazing. amazing. It's so amazing yeah. that you can see where you came from and you know and help out. Yeah. You know. So it must feel big for you guys. Yeah. It feel good for you guys to see her have this kind of success, knowing you gave her one of her first opportunities. Yeah. You know, here's a woman. She had a short. And she did not study film in school. Not at all. She was a publicist. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, I can do this. And so she had a small location, like it was a house. Mm -hmm. It was shot on a tight schedule. Sure. She did self distribution and she just kept on moving. So her next film, she became uh, named Best Director at Sundance wow. for her second film. And now, you know, now she's, she's absolutely uh, troubling. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you can do it. You feel like you can do it. So we were just discussing about people who may be ready or not ready for the film festival. How do, what would you tell somebody, like, who just came out the box, well, I want to just film in a film festival? Well, I really, really appreciate what Sean was saying earlier. You know, I think you get better with practice mm -hmm. sometimes. True. Um, <laughs> so he had five submissions before he was accepted. So sometimes your first thing... Was that you telling him no, personally? No. <laughs> personally. Oh, here he is again. He out there again. He out there again. Look forward to your future creative endeavors. Because, you know, we want you to keep on growing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm glad he was persistent. I really, really appreciate it. He could have um, gave up right at that fourth no and been like, forget this. Right? Yeah, yeah, him today. yeah, don't do that. Um, just keep on trying. Because it's all about storytelling, but it's not just the storytelling, it's the technical aspects. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want to have something with a great story, but you can't hear it. Sound right. You know? sound like Absolutely. Or it's out of focus. No soundtrack, the sound, the score ain't done right. You so know what those are all the components. Or you don't have the music at. clearance. Yeah, well, that's true. Uh -huh. so you don't have good actors. So you need the Team. any music to be clear to get into a festival? Well, you know, yeah. Somebody else's no, music. No, I'm just saying, you know. Well, people we, need well, to know that. Because yeah. you think no, for no. a festival. We use, we use Maxwell's song. Yeah. And we didn't have to get it clear. We just had to get uh, permission to let them know we wasn't using it. it, it we weren't getting paid. Making money. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have to make right. a notice of it and to let people know that if it goes out in the future, Right. After the festival thing, yeah. you've got to have that clearance. You right. make a fuck in the festival, you just can't play it and, and sell it like that. You gotta right. produce the music, it's a tough thing. Yeah, and they're serious. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll come for you. <laughs> they're serious. The the yeah, they don't even want to give you the, um, give you the deal because you don't have to turn to the music. Right. You know, we, had a, we had a music supervisor that kind of handled that for yes. us. So right. That's a real expertise yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta have a music guy that knows music. Absolutely. You know, oh, oh, yeah. A music person. Black yes, that's a good one. So tell but, us about the submission process. Okay, let me say something okay. regarding that, and then I'll talk about submission. So we realize in Ron's Lens, this thing is complicated. And so we have a series of legal panels on Thursday 
to deal with uh, the nitty gritty of acquisition, the nitty gritty of distribution, mm -hmm. uh, setting up your company as a business, those kinds of things. We want nice. to give takeaways for our mm -hmm. filmmakers so that they really can go out and power. Real tools. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you guys did a screening for uh, Hidden Figures last year, correct? Remember no, we, we didn't? didn't. Somebody else did. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm we surprised didn't you guys didn't do that. Well, you know, it depends on the timing of when something is released. Okay. So it wasn't released during our time. Mm -hmm. But you guys do screens year round, so the, yes. the, uh, the uh, promotion people that came to you said, hey, you want to do a screen? Sometimes they do, okay. sometimes they go elsewhere. Okay. Yeah. It's competitive out here. Some yeah. colleges are even trying to get fig uh, hidden figures. And actually, I saw that at Morehouse. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. What does the name Bronze Lens come from? It actually comes from somebody who is um, an expert at coming up with titles really? and names. Yeah, a consultant who okay. uh, did it for us gratis. And when we explained that we wanted to have it be not just black folks, we wanted it to cover people of color mm -hmm. wow. worldwide. Uh, mm -hmm. That's when the bronze came in. That's amazing. Yeah, and then lens we want in front of and behind the lens. Okay. Yeah. So that's what it's. You about. said that's gratis. Could you explain what that means to, to Guinea? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this year we have uh, we have a real interesting documentary called Lasian Narratives, and it is mm -hmm. something that actually started in the AU Center. Mm -hmm. There were quite a few students that are of uh, black heritage as well as Asian heritage, sure. and it could be Filipino, Japanese, whatever, and they talk about their identity, and they've become actually a theater group, and they do stuff all around the country now, but they also did a documentary okay. about being Blasian, mm. and it's really very interesting. See, everybody has a voice now, and that's the beautiful thing about the internet now. This is when internet, I feel like the internet is used the right way because you have an audience waiting on you, and you can make a con and make a project, get in festivals, of course, but also create a following using um, your online resources. Mm -hmm. so, do you I, look at that as far as like the following? Do you see? No. Okay. But it That's helps. not a consideration mm -hmm. for us in terms of the judging. Right. Okay. It's the content. Do your judges change every year? Yes. But they it do. helps pack the theater out for the screeners, though, I'm sure, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. My yes. little joke about the judges is when we first started, I was running around to every Starbucks in town with a little package of uh, DVDs for them to look at, mm -hmm. to judge. Mm -hmm. And we're really blessed that we have a lot of wonderful professionals here that are already in the film business. So it wasn't like I was just picking anybody. Mm -hmm. I was picking real professionals. But now we do stuff online. People submit on Film Freeway. And I've got judges now from all over the world. Mm -hmm. From Barbados, wow. Brazil, uh, in Africa. You know, it's amazing. Wow. It's it's great. And you said your submissions are all over the world as well. Not just yes, absolutely. Yeah. On Saturday we have uh, International Day. and. We've got films from South Africa. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, the Car Caribbean, you know, just all over. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's wonderful. Wow. It's exciting. So how, how, what's the total amount of submissions? How much? Yeah. Well, it varies, mm -hmm. and um, so you would have to look at our website. We're going to start back open in November, but early bird is cheaper. And if you're a Georgia filmmaker, we give you a discounted rate. Uh, yeah. So we want to honor and develop our uh, Georgia mm -hmm. artists, mm -hmm. and so we do that. And they always, as it escalates, because then we have a regular period and a late period, it will always be a Georgia so discount. What's the typical um, amount of submissions you get? Every year, we get a couple hundred. Oh, nice. Wow, that's a lot of time. So but people, whether they pay, whether they they pay, they still might not get in. Right. It's a wild shot. You paid several times. Yeah. You can't get in, but you do can yeah. make that check out. <laughs> 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 invested, this, I'm saying. But I do want to say, you know, in terms of how we've grown, um, we as of uh, January we announced that we have been designated as an Academy Award. I saw the email. I got the email. Oh, OMG. Category. It's big. That it's is huge. huge. That's huge. Yeah, I got the email. I was like, wow. Did you see that when you started out? You, were you looking at that? No, big? I didn't even think that. And so I will now. tell you that God has been good to us. Yes. And we try to be good to our filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And we call them our family. 
after we screen with them, we want them to stay in touch with us. So whatever your next project is, if you're going to have distribution, you know, let us know. So you help because them with distribution? we have a newsletter and we will put that out. Do you help them with distribution at all? Mm -hmm. Do you help them with distribution? No, we don't at this point. But we are going to be talking about having a Bronze Lens channel. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. And so like we that. will be talking about that at this And festival. what Ava's doing, you just mentioned, she's doing mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. now do you have a connection with Netflix? Do you, do you or is it like a... We don't personal. personal. Okay. So. Yeah. I think a Bronze Lens channel is, is amazing. That's because, super cool. Um, I, know, yeah. I know for a fact that um, there's so much content out there that needs to be seen. And you guys can be that vehicle to help get it mm -hmm. out there. It's just so many, so many hoops you have to go through to get distribution. So yeah, it seems crazy, but it's it's definitely better today than ten years ago. I mean, even Rob Hardy was telling us about that, like all these internet, a lot, a lot online, you know, yeah, yeah, e yeah. options. Absolutely. Right? Well, you know, we even have another distribution panel. I mentioned the legal aspect, but then we're going to have uh, Nicole Denson Randolph who uh, heads up AMC Independent. Mm -hmm. And so she's gonna be on the panel. Great. Our board chair, Terrell Whitley, who is with Liquid Soul. Mm -hmm. And they deal, they he's do like a, yeah, a, a major player. Uh, mm -hmm. He deals in film and television. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Angela Northington with UMC. Okay. So people will be able to come right. and to go further. Right. So, do you get cross? Uh, I guess like, you know, they have the Jewish Film Festival. The people that submit to them, will they submit to you or they kind of stay in their own lane? Well, you know, funny you should mention that. Uh, last year, we showed the documentary, um, My Mind is Swimming with the Names and Titles, but it was done by Deborah Riley Draper, who is a uh, person who lives here. Exceptionally talented. She used to be uh, an executive with a marketing company. Okay. And so she knows marketing. She did uh, one uh, documentary we showed one year, Versailles 73, which was about uh, black models in Versailles. And it's going to be made into a feature film. Wow. And she had this whole network of distribution. So um, we have really, really good people that can talk about that next step. Mm -hmm. But uh, she did something regarding the 1936 Olympics that we showed last year. I, I'm seeing a trend happen here. A lot of documentaries are being turned into films now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm working with somebody on something. Uh, they did a documentary called The um, Woman of Marwin. Oh, no, so Marwin Call was a documentary about this guy who got jumped on in New York outside of a club and almost brain dead and everything else. And, you know, by the grace God, he came back and, and he started to create this. Um, thing out in his yard. His form of therapy was him putting it in his front yard, his own little city, with mm -hmm. action figures and dolls. Really? It's an amazing documentary. Uh, Janelle told me about it. It was an amazing documentary. And then it turned into a film now. Robert Zemeckis is directing and Steve Carell starring in it. Do you know Monet told you about it? Mm -hmm. She's in the film, so yeah, yeah, she has. Ah, nice. So, um, but I just think John that, um, No, no, I just, I didn't say, you said it for me. I just said, but I'm, but I'm saying that now that you said that he has a documentary to turn it, it could be the film. Yes. You know, so I think that's something we got to start looking at too. Like, we watch an incredible documentary. Because mm -hmm. it's a real life story. People love to see a real life story. Yeah. yeah. That, they feel yeah. connected to it. A yeah, so more. we need to start looking at some documentaries to turn it into film. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> right. So tell us about the film festival. So it's how many days? Well, funny, we're going to start actually uh, this upcoming Sunday. We're doing something we've never done before. I don't know if anybody knows, but our uh, founder and executive director, Kathleen Bertrand, mm -hmm. is also a jazz singer. Yeah. I did her headshots. <laughs> I did her headshots not too long. Yeah, I shot yeah. her picture for it. Yeah. Amazing. So uh, she's assembled a group of women and uh, sisters in song. She's already done one concert, but this one is going to focus about music from the movies. Okay. And so you can find out about that on our website. Then uh, on Wednesday, we short, start with shorts, uh, Wednesday evening. Okay. Um, and those are longer shorts. And so we're going to show four of them. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go uh, to see an episode of Greenleaf with Lamont Rucker. Okay. Nice. And uh, then we have just a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Thursday will be the legal mashup and talking about uh, the channel. And then we start other uh, things like uh, Friday. I moderate a panel about the status of production in Georgia. Okay. And when we started, we had no idea it was going to shoot off the way it has. Mm -hmm. We're talking $9.5 billion. And so that particular panel includes a lot of big players. Uh, we want 
people to realize that this is something that's not just about directors and actors, it's about businesses. And so one of the people on our panel, uh, we normally have a whole workshop, but we're going to do that after the festival. Because people that are in business, you know, you could have a florist, you could mow lawns if you have a lawn care company, if caterers, mm -hmm. uh, dry cleaners, yeah. they need everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so um, we do something about becoming a camera ready vendor. Mm -hmm. And so we want this to be something that the whole community can benefit. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize how many components the film makers and the industry is brought here now. Right. Uh, I had somebody reach out to me the other day. They, they, they had a friend that used to own a funeral home. And they wanted to donate all, not donate, but sell all their stuff from the funeral home to a movie studio. I said, well, that's not how that works. You need to go to a prop person. Right. And maybe mm -hmm. the studio won't buy it and have access to it. Right. A prop person will. You know, think about the hearse and the casket. You need that stuff for film. Absolutely. I, I know, I know a girl makes tons of money just catering to film. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Um, what's, the, what's the shortest length of uh, film that you all take? Actually, it is a film like about five or six minutes, and it's wow. a Georgia film that was done. Okay. But it was done so beautifully, wow. and it had such a, a strong story. Five minutes, wow. Yeah, yeah, five or six minutes, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. you got to be creative to pull that off. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta just not tell a story. Yeah, not everybody can do it. Not everybody can Don't look at me talking about that. Get on high pitch with me. <laughs> Keep trying over here. It took five years. <laughs> but you know, I would like to say that uh, sometimes people can submit something that's way too long. Okay. Because okay. time is my enemy. Yeah. You know, I've got to schedule this and, you know, see how everything goes. Mm -hmm. And so if something is like nearly two hours long, mm -hmm. usually a movie is like an hour, 20 minutes right. max. Yeah. And so, come on now. <laughs> so you really so do watch it to there, the end? Yes. Everybody out there, if with your really two-hour film, cut it down. Give Please. us a condensed version. Please. Yes, <laughs> cut it down. Sometimes people are too close to it, and they yeah. can't see what to cut out. I can't cut nothing out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, we are, we're at the uh, segment of the show where we play uh, a game called Seen It. And today we want to talk about our favorite documentaries, right? Yes. Right? Right. So Sean oh, yeah. Mathis has a documentary that's in the festival. So Sean, what was your favorite Ooh, documentary? Documentary. Uh, hmm. Well, I, I I just saw the Defiant ones. That was very good. That was amazing. I don't know if it was my favorite, but it's amazing. right offhand. It was it was very amazing. well. Yeah, it was very amazing. inspiring. And that's a documentary? Yes, yeah. documentary. A docu series. It's a, maybe that's a docu series. Yeah. If they would just show it as one sitting, it would be a documentary. Yeah. So Thank thanks, you. thanks for ruining it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was very good. Was very good. Um, let me see. I would think maybe HBO's Beyonce Lemonade. That honestly, that was a good documentary. Right? That I'm was very. Real. I can't believe you agreeing with him. No, I'm agreeing with him. <laughs> I, 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 what? I, I wasn't. I wasn't a Beyonce. I'm not a huge R&B fan, but her work ethic, I saw it just shine through on that on that documentary. Yeah. It was really dope. Good hair was also good. Remember good hair? Uh, yeah, that was good. You yeah. went to Chris Rock? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was good. Yeah. 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 I didn't know. I didn't realize how far they got hair from. And I was like, yeah, that so was so good. So when ladies on the bed, like, where's his hair from? Right. And, how, <laughs> and how we are yeah. cut out of the black hair care hey, industry. The way Chris did it, he made it funny. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. Insightful, but at the same time, you learned. You did learn. And what about you? What's your favorite documentary? Well, you know, I used to uh, produce documentaries um, mm -hmm. in my other life. Yeah, okay. I am a documentary person. So, um, I have a lot of favorites, but you know, this past summer we had a documentary series, mm -hmm. and one of them I thought was really very interesting was Born to the Struggle, mm -hmm. and it was really very interesting because it was about the children of activists, not necessarily civil rights leaders, mm -hmm. but activists okay. who, you know, like civil rights people, they put everything on the line. But mm -hmm. um, it was like, what happened to them when they grew up? Yeah, and, yeah. you know, they were talking sometimes, you know, my, my parents were just so dedicated that they weren't necessarily a parent figure, yes. but they made such an impact on society. Yeah. Instead of my life. Yes, wow. that happens yeah. a lot. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Malcolm X and Dr. King, they yeah, had to sacrifice right. that part to be so much for other people. Mm. Mm. You know? yeah. uh, What's that called? What was that? What was that called? It's called Born to the Struggle. Born to the Struggle. I'm gonna look yeah. that up. Yeah. And uh, I think it's probably available uh, online. I'll mm -hmm. let you all know. Mm -hmm. okay. What about you? Uh, it sounds really uh, interesting. I have two. 
uh, 13th. Okay. I watched oh, it twice. Yes, I watched sure. it twice. Yes. I, mean, I watched it twice. Changed the whole way I look at the prison system, the politics of that. I haven't seen it yet. I have to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you gotta see that. And another one was something I just watched. What the hell? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Oh, what the hell? What the hell? Stop me from eating meat. So yeah. I'm like, okay. You then, still, yeah, you still doing it? I had six weeks strong on meat. Nice. nice. Oh, have you seen that? What the hell? Yeah, no. You see him, he keeps fading out over there. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, I gotta go back to Kansas City. So I, I eat barbecue when I'm back home. Wait, so I you're gonna eat it? I, I, I gotta figure this out. I gotta figure this out. <laughs> Y'all got some tofu barbecue? Tofu barbecue. Barbecue salmon. Man, they gonna send barbecue you right back on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I need you a beef bowl. I do, I do. Uh -huh. yeah, no, 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 no meat. Yeah, poultry and stuff like yeah, that. I stay with the fish. Okay. So you seeing 13th didn't get you angry? You know, it didn't because, you know, I think the resolve for that for me was understanding the system more and how the system is set up for designed for us to be in the situation we're in. Well, that's, that reminds me of and another one I saw the Khalid Broadus. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. That was, I, used be, I used to be upset with us and people sometimes by the way we, were, you know, the way things turned out and then how we react to certain things. But now I know that we were pushed into this corner. It wasn't, this wasn't our plan, this wasn't our design. Right. This was designed for us to fail. Mm -hmm. So understanding that made me look at the whole situation. Mm -hmm. and we, I put it like this, we have excuses, but we don't have excuses. You, you, you got solutions. excuses to fail all now, day, now but, know. But, but you gotta still arise because everybody in here came to come through the same thing. Right. Everybody else, I'm from the west side of Detroit, it don't get no worse than that. Right. But you saw something better. Right. A lot of us don't see anything. Right. So and then, and then when you don't see anything, you just look, okay, well, the quick, fast thing is to go over and sell drugs, whatever, and we think that that's the way, and that's just designed for us. Because we didn't bring drugs here. No. We didn't, you know, if you look at, no, the, the drugs was brought over by the government. You sold drugs, what, one weekend? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard. Sometimes you don't see anything better, but yeah. you, you have something inside of you. Something mm -hmm. inside of you is making you like, no, this is not the will of God for my life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Cheryl, what what's your favorite documentary? Yeah, what's your favorite? Besides... Miles in the. <laughs> oh, I, I can't say that one. Um, my favorite doc is actually a docu series on on uh, like C N C B C N S B C or something like that. Uh, the American Greed series. Oh, um, I love. I'm hooked on it too. You're a financial guy, so. <laughs> that makes so sense. So when they got Teddy Riley, when they got Teddy Riley, yeah, yes. I saw each one. I see the one with Teddy Riley. Cars. Nicole Murphy got got. Oh, she did. She really? got she she dated a guy got got up for like twenty million. Oh, Nicole Murphy. Where'd she get the money from, Eddie? I don't know where she got the money from. It was a lot <laughs> See, of money. She had a good settlement. Anything, any American Greed series. I love it too. I watch, but I also watch What the Hell. I'm eight weeks, you know what I mean? My man, my man, my man. So Me down, too, I'm eight I'm, weeks too. I'm down 54 pounds. Yeah, you gotta make a lot of weight. Yeah. 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 But I've been eating a lot more. Uh, car carbs and yeah, so like, Chick Fil A fries is like my go to. <laughs> right. about in this building on Tuesdays and Thursdays when we're doing the um, writers' room. Yeah. I stop at Chick Fil A first. I get my fries. That's the only uh -huh. issue. It's like you off meat, but then you find other substitutes. I'm more rice and pasta now. And See, yeah, yeah, I'm more like meat for me. Just bacon. <laughs> <Huh? I'm in. laughs> You said what? Yeah, you gotta I gotta see it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, I gotta see it too. I'm gonna hit it on the fire stick tonight. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I can't with this. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so, um, yeah, this was fun. Yeah, it was great. Very entertaining and very insightful. Yeah, and hopefully, um, Sean's uh, two festival interests in here can, can give people insight on how not to give up and not, not to really understand that part of this is just being persistent. So, I think that he showed us that. But so, also, do they win something? Yes. Okay. Different categories win different things. Mm -hmm. And um, again, sometimes it's financial, sometimes mm -hmm. it's software services. You just got to get financial. You got to get here. You said the years rolling. Because you, you, you need money to make that short into a feature. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> you need money to make that feature a feature. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, the uh, best short gets the upgrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Give a round of applause to my Industry Scoop. We're here every Thursday. One o'clock. Yeah. Thank you. Now who's up and coming? What's coming up? We talking television, film, entertainment and such. The hottest topic here, we got it in the clutch. Sports.